नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर द एजेंडा फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज कनेक्टेड टू बायोटेक्नोलॉजी वेर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट जेनेटिकली एडिटेड मस्टर नाउ यू ऑलरेडी थिंकिंग सर आई नो अबाउट दिस आई हैड अबाउट इट आई नो अबाउट जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड मस्टर इट्स वेरियंट इज कॉल्ड डी एम एच इलेवन द धारा मस्टर हाइब्रिड इलेवन इट हैज बीन डेवलप्ड बाई अ टीम लेड बाई दीपक पेंटल ऑफ द सेंटर फॉर जेनेटिक मैनिपुलेशन ऑफ क्रॉप प्लांट्स न्यू डेली एंड लास्ट ईयर आई ऑल्सो रेड that the genetic engineering appraisal committee has given its approval to dmh 11 along with certain riders now you should not get confused between these two discussions we are not going to discuss about genetically modified mustard or dmh 11 we are going to discuss about genetically edited mustard we'll try to understand the nuances between them by taking details of a recent research where scientists have created genetically edited mustard with certain benefits which will have game changing results if it is successfully implemented in our country all right let's begin our interaction but before that there is a small notice for all the upsc civil services aspirants study iq is offering prelims to interview program the august batch is starting from 23rd august 2023 you just have a couple of hours you just have a few hours to enroll for this particular program please do it because this is the most comprehensive program the most integrated program where we will be hand holding you through all the stages prelims mains interview everything it is priced at a very affordable range to get max discount you can use my code rahul life all right do not miss out on this train because this would be one of the last batches for 2024 preparation do it soon i'll see you in the class right right let's begin our discussion about mustard now first of all students get get can get confused with this particular discussion by connecting this genetically edited mustard with genetically modified mustard let me first talk about the genetic genetically modified mustard which you already know because this has been in discussion for quite few years now almost 5 6 years back the government first approved or the geac first approved the dmh 11 then there was a lot of pro protest and ultimately in 2022 again the genetic engineering appraisal committee under the moe of tc has approved cultivation of dhara mustard hybrid 11 along with certain riders they have told or uh, it it has been mentioned that study of dmh 11 on bees especially for pollination that has to be conducted and a report has to be submitted so we'll keep an eye on that we know about dmh 11 it is genetically modified mustard it has been developed by a team led by deepak pentel and what they have done because see we know in the in mustard hybridization it becomes very very tough why because mustard is a perfect flower so what they did for the genetically modified mustard they took two variant they took one indian variant it is called varuna variant it is a high yielding variety from indian side they crossed it with east european variant and what they did was they incorporated certain external genes they incorporated external genes from a bacteria soil bacteria called as bacillus amylolycophaceans they took bar star gene and incorporated it in the east european variant to enhance its fertility they incorporated barnes gene to suppress the fertility of the male variant varuna and they created a hybrid along with it they also incorporated another gene called as bar which helps which basically helps it to become resistant to a herbicide called as phosphinothricin it goes by commercial name pasta and there have been lot of developments lot of been a lot of information about this it has been approved last year this is the genetically modified mustard meaning please remember an external gene from one particular bacteria i would say three genes from this bacteria have been taken and incorporated in this hybrid but now what has happened is scientists have not incorporated any external gene they have edited already existing indian variant so please try to understand this is genetically modified mustard we are going to discuss about genetically edited mustard here there is no concept of hybridization between these two the discussion specifically is connected the discussion specifically is connected to indian varuna variant in which certain genes have been edited how they have been edited i'll discuss that now you have a question sir why did they edit why did they edit some genes in our own indian variant what happened see 
we do know that rape seed mustard it is one of the important one of the important constituents which provides us vegetable oils and you do know that india imports lot of oils from outside because we are not able to fulfill our domestic requirement in fact mustard oil or mustard vegetable oil is used in india extensively in the northern part you do know that if you look at the total total vegetable oil produced in india 42% of it it comes from mustard itself even higher than soya bean we do import a lot of palm oil from many other countries now please try to understand we just do not consume the oil first of all we take these seeds we crush them we get the oil we use this for cooking and for other purposes and whatever residue comes out we make a cake out of it and that residue left out it in form of cake it becomes a very important ingredient or a food product which is rich in proteins which is fed to livestock poultry etc so we use two products one is the oil for our consumption and the residue cake for livestock but what is the problem with indian varuna variant the problem is when we crush this indian varuna variant there are two big issues first issue is high levels of glucosinolates now glucosinolates are compounds which comprise of sulfur and nitrogen and when you crush it the amount of glucosinolate it gives the characteristic pungent feeling or pungent taste to the oil you must have seen or you must have felt it that mustard oil is quite pungent in comparison to other oil and indian variant varuna when we crush it it generally gives 120 to 130 ppm that is 120 to 130 milligrams per kg of glucosinolates are in that oil and for a canola quality oil we need less than 30 parts per million please remember canola quality oil is suitable for suitable for eating canola quality oil or canola quality seeds they germinate 90 percent of those seeds will germinate because we can use them for for the for future cultivation as well so what i want any kind of oil seed that i want i would want it to be canola standard canola is a standard please remember that so first issue with indian variant is high levels of glucosinolates and the second issue is this glucosinolate if i put it or if i if i feed it to the livestock because you do understand the residue cake is given to the livestock it is given to poultry and the problem with rapeseed mustard seed residue cake is it is indigestible in most poultry and pigs so what what is done right now is it is diluted it is mixed with fodder grass it is mixed with water and it is fed and if we use residue cake of the current rapeseed mustard seed in large quantities it leads to many problems in livestock one of the biggest problems is goiter goiter the enlargement near the neck now it, it happens in humans because of the shortage of iodine you do know that apart from that high glucosinolates they also lead to a lot of organ abnormalities in many livestock in india so these are the two problems because of which now indian scientists have been working for almost two decades now scientists at different institutions like the center for genetic manipulation of crop crop plants indian council of agriculture research many institutes are working and now they have gotten a solution how by using the revolutionary crispr cas9 technology you must have heard about crispr cas9 technology crispr cas9 is a technology of molecular scissors where you can make a dna double strand cut very very easily at a convenient place and scientists have now published this paper indians indian scientists have published a paper in plant biotechnology journal a renowned journal you can see targeted editing of multiple homologous genes gtr1 and gtr2 which have improved the efficiency which have improved the performance and quality of oil produced by rapeseed mustard seed after editing now the question is sir, how they have edited and i want to understand what exactly is the difference between that genetically modified mustard you mentioned dmh11 and this now in the dmh11 crispr cas9 technology is not used of course both work on the both work on the on the basis of that recombinant dna only but here there is no external gene which is incorporated all right and in the in the current genetically edited mustard crispr cas9 technology is used and you do know crispr cas9 it was adapted from a bacteria it's basically a natural defense mechanism of a bacteria called a streptococcus pyogene 
you do know bacteria can be attacked by virus that is bacteriophages and the bacteria streptococcus pyogenes when it, it was attacked by a virus it created its own defense mechanism how it it first of all found out a mechanism to identify the dna of that virus and cut that cut that virus's dna or genetic information and also store that information meaning if next time the same virus comes with the same genetic information it can directly end that virus so what we have done we took this natural pathway or natural defense mechanism of streptococcus pyogenes and we have developed our own engineered crispr cas9 system or crispr cas9 complex how do we engineer it at a particular site we send a guide rna and this guide rna will cut the dna at a specific point it will go for a double strand cut that means dna it is double stranded so it will cut both the strands of the dna at a particular location depending on the particular code and that code is sent via the guide rna and scientists have also developed different kind of complexes crispr cas9 complexes where not just molecular not just molecular scissor or it just it will not act as molecular scissor but it will also help in repair now there are two ways that we can go for dna repair one thing is using crispr cas9 simply cut the dna at one particular portion and leave it just like that the dna will auto repair this is called as non homogeneous end joining if you simply leave it by cutting it the there would there is a natural dna repair mechanism it would be repaired or else we can also go for homologous directed repair where when i cut some particular part of the code i can add i can add another gene or another specific code here and please remember in genetically edited mustard scientists have used non homogeneous end joining that means they have simply cut certain genes which were responsible for high amount of glycosinolates in seed so what they have done they have used crispr cas9 and they have identified that in indian varuna variant there are totally 12 genes gtr1 and gtr2 multiplied by 6 totally 12 kind of genes which are responsible for high levels of glycosinolates in plant and please remember if you are thinking sir glycosinolates are they useless for plant as well no glycosinolates have a big role for a plant if glycosinolate levels go down in a plant then its defense mechanism or its or its immune system if defense system it goes down means pathogens and pests can attack the plant very easily so scientists had a big big challenge in front of them they they had to ensure that these glycosinolates whose quantity in leaves and in stem it should be maintained but its number or its amount should reduce in a seed and for that they went for some sort of gene editing they edited gtr1 and gtr2 genes out of 12 genes they have edited 10 scientists have mentioned that by using crispr cas9 technology which is nothing but the technology of molecular scissoring where the dna would be cut at appropriate places at precise locations so that the gene so that the gene which is responsible for taking these glycosinolates into seeds that is suppressed the meaning is that through this genetically edited mustard scientists have ensured that the glycosinolate amount only in seeds is now up at the appropriate level for canola quality seed but the glycosinolate level in the leaves and in the stem it is not reduced because if that reduces then the defense mechanism would be weakened and they have tested this for the gtr edited mustard they have seen that glycosinolate level is very high in leaves and that's why it provides resistance against other virulent fungal pathogens there are some examples of fungal pathogens and in insects which have been which have been suppressed or or the plant was able to fight these pathogens quite effectively meaning scientists have su successfully ensured that the glycosinolate is suppressed in the seeds because i because i do not want glycosinolates in the oil so that the pungency would reduce the oil quality is enhanced also the residue cake it will have low levels of glucosinolate that is the importance of this particular study i hope things are clear now you must be thinking now you must be thinking sir what is the use of all these things because what i have read what i have read during my preparation days is that i have seen uh, that scientists would be developing so many variants we have seen about bt brinjal we have seen about bt corn bt potato 
recently even with the genetically modified mustard there was a lot of protest in india and to get approval for dmh 11 it was it was an arduous journey so will the same thing happen for this as well and the answer would be no because you need to understand the difference between genetically modified crops and genetically edited crops because last year in march 2022 the government has come up department of biotechnology has come up with new guidelines for the safety assessment of genome edited plant and there they have specifically mentioned that we would be providing exemption for regulation of sdn1 and sdn2 and please remember this sdn1 and sdn2 what does this mean it means in any crop in any plant variety if there is no foreign gene if there is no foreign gene which is incorporated then easy approval would be provided to it how if if there is no foreign gene which is incorporated in the crop then the approval process it does not lie with the genetic engineering appraisal committee it does not go to geac it lies with the ibsc ibsc is the institutional biosafety committee which comprises of scientists from different institutions who are actually working on genetically edited crops meaning approval for genetically edited crops would be relatively easier this happened last year itself so if you are thinking sir this genetically edited mustard indian variant itself varuna in which genes have been edited so will it get approval probably yes because already the scientists have applied an application has already gone to the ibsc scrutiny will happen and then and then it might be approved for commercial cultivation we'll keep an eye on that so let us hope things will improve i already told you that we started the discussion with india's oil imports they are already quite high we import a lot of oil and in fact this july the july last month we have we have reached record levels of oil imports and with this research with things improving let's hope that the oil imports would reduce and we'll save the forex as well but from exam perspective do remember the difference between genetically modified crops and genetically edited crops i'll repeat it genetically modified crops will have some out some gene or it is basically a transgenic crop meaning a gene has come from somewhere else in the in the bt cotton it comes from bacillus thuringiensis in dmh11 it has come from bacillus amylolycophaceans those genes from specific bacteria have been incorporated in the crop and then through the through the cell culture and tissue culture we have got gotten the seeds but now through crispr cas9 we have directly edited we have directly edited the genes of indian variant varuna now you will have a question sir you told there is no gene but there is some foreign component that is nothing but crispr cas9 now what is this crispr, CRISPR cas9 it is an engineered complex or it is an engineered gene from from another bacteria or from wherever the scientists have developed it but here the researchers have ensured that in the next generation cas9 will not have any impact so we cannot consider genetically edited mustard as transgenic because it does not have any external gene is it clear right i hope things are quite clear right now if there is any development if there is any news on this we'll discuss that again in our study iq discussion all right that's the end of today's discussion thank you for watching it and if you have liked the discussion you can always follow me on this particular id at the rate rahul sai 222 thank you very much again jai hind